Tonight, we have Holland America featuring Alaska 2022, cruises and cruise tours, as well as longer itineraries. For any of you who have not been on a Zoom call before, everyone is muted for the size of the group. You do have the opportunity to have your camera on or off. I know sometimes we don't like to have our camera on, but in this day and age where we never see anybody, I think it's really nice to be able to see faces. So if you feel comfortable, please turn your camera on. My name is Lisa Anflick. I am one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. And tonight's travel talk is being hosted by our six Edmonton Cruises locations in the area of Edmonton. We started these travel talks to inspire you, to educate you, and to let you know what's happening in the travel industry and to help you plan for the future. We are now at 15 months that travel has been shut down and I can tell you that I miss it terribly. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And I know that those of you who are on this call probably feel the same way. We miss travel, I can't wait to get back to it when it is safe to do so. And I'm really optimistic that 2022 and definitely into 2023 is gonna be the time where it is safe to travel again. I wanna just let you know that there is a difference between traveling and planning travel. And while we are not uh, advocating planning to go right now, we are uh, suggesting that you think about it in the future. And there's a couple of reasons for it. And one of the most important is we all need something to look forward to. And studies have shown that part of the enjoyment of a trip is planning for it. So we wanna help you look and plan for your future. Uh, our Expedia offices are open. We do ask that you call or email your consultants to set up an appointment, just because we're trying to stick with the COVID restrictions. We are here to help you. Travel is gonna be different as we go into things opening up. It will look a little bit different. It will, there will be different requirements and get guidelines. So we are here to help you with that. So what I'd like to do tonight is turn you over to our special guest, Tom Steer from Holland America, who's going to enlighten us on what's happening with Holland America and Alaska. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. This is great. It's great to see so many faces. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my screen here. Give me two seconds. Now, hopefully, Within uh, a few seconds, you will see a picture of the Wester Dam in Alaska to get the ball rolling. Let's see. Hopefully you can all see that. All righty, fantastic. So um, as Lisa mentioned, my name's Tom. I represent Holland America in Western Canada. Um, there's my uh, high school picture in case you didn't already see what I look like. <laughs> and before I go any further, and talk about all the great stuff, the itineraries, Alaska and more. I do want to touch on some uh, important details and I'm sure some things that are top of mind for many of you. Um, and that is what we're doing in terms of our return to sale, in terms of protocols and procedures, what we have in place. Um, now, we're working around the clock with the CDC, the WHO, the clear cruise lines, we're working on these protocols and you can find them yourself uh, at any time on the Holland America website, but better still reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultant. They have the latest information because we update, we update this information quite frequently as we get closer to returning to sail. Some of you may have seen recent news that we've just started sailing, uh, announced that we'll be sailing later this summer to Alaska, out of Seattle and, and um, also in Greece this summer. Perhaps not something you're considering yourselves this summer, but it's good to know we're actually starting um, the ball rolling again um, this, uh, later this summer. And as we begin to get closer to that point, you'll be seeing more of these protocols being updated. So if you have questions, you have any concerns, or you just want to see what we're doing, you can check the website or reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultant for the latest information. So um, uh, Lisa touched on this at the beginning. It's fantastic to see so many of you. I mean, I would love to be there in person with you, you know, um, talking about cruises while you enjoy a glass of wine. Um, hopefully you're able to do that this evening or, or enjoy something you uh, like uh, while you watch. But being virtual is the next best thing. 
Uh, I, I love traveling around uh, Western Canada, speaking with fellow cruise fans, fellow Holland America fans. It's actually a cruise line that's very close to my heart, that's very dear to me. I worked for Holland America at sea as well as on land. Um, I met my wife on board a Holland America line ship. We named our kids after Holland America line ships. Little Zyderdam is four and Nordam is seven. No, that's not true. We, uh, we just call them the Dam Kids, has a, has a better ring to it. Uh, in all seriousness though, it's just such a fantastic product. And I know many of you this evening have cruised Holland America many times, avid Holland America cruisers. Some of you have cruised Holland America, but maybe not, not for quite a few years and others not at all. You're completely new to Holland America. So thank you for joining whichever one of those categories you fit into. For those of you who aren't as familiar with Holland America, I'm gonna kind of uh, gonna give you a little bit of an introduction to what Holland America is all about before we look at those itineraries. Um, we say we're for explorers, foodies, and music lovers. That's really us in a nutshell. Um, this kind of sums it up. W one thing we don't have are things like water slides, go-karts, roller coasters. You won't find that Holland America. There's a market for those things, but there's an increasing market of, uh, of folks who are looking for uh, ships of a decent size with a lot of variety on board, but they don't want those kind of things. They want more touches of luxury, more kind of spacious areas, more spacious staterooms, uh, and a little bit more of a personalized touch. So that's where Holland America really comes in. Uh, there's also folks who have only cruised on very small ships, but they want, want a little bit more variety on board, a bit more space, a few more options. That's where Holland America really fits the bill. So with the Holland America experience, it does come down to those things that I've mentioned, um, the service itself, but the ships, the actual dam fleet, the dam ships themselves play, play a big role with Holland America because um, we are, um, we do have mid-sized ships, but but we prefer to say perfectly sized because there are other cruise lines that say mid-sized and uh, their, their ships have grown so big in some cases they have a thousand more guests on board than we would. So we say perfectly sized because all of our ships are under a hundred thousand tons on average around 2000 guests. Um, but it's not just the numbers, it's actually the style of the ships, that, that iconic dark blue hull, the wraparound teak decks, Things that I like to point out, this picture, whenever I see it, I think of it immediately. On the top left-hand side, you see some kind of sliding, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of sliding roof. That is in fact our Magradome. It's very kind of uncommon in the cruise industry. That is a sliding roof that we can slide over our pool, Lido pool area, because we're sailing 365 days of the year to uh, all seven continents. There's inclement weather some days, and we can just slide that over um, with a touch of a button, and so folks can carry on enjoying the Lido pool area and relax in that area. Um, for other cruise lines that don't have a roof that retracts, everyone has to go down inside the ship and makes it even more crowded. That's, that's not an issue we have. So the, the ships themselves are iconic, but also the, the size contributes to the experience. There's a lot of activities and fun and enrichment and, and, and things to do uh, on board, a lot going on under the hood. I'm not going to talk about them all. I might mention one or two, but we just don't have time. So, so do um, uh, reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultant for more information on some of these things. In terms of who's cruising on Holland America, we have all sorts of cruises, anniversary couples, um, sisters, reunions, um, girls getaway, family groups, family reunions. We're great for the family groups, especially in Alaska, what we, you know, the region we're going to talk about this evening. Um, we have groups where you have the aunts, the uncles, the grandkids, the grandparents, everyone coming to cruise. And we do have younger cruisers on board. We'll have kids on board, especially on our kind of shorter, say, seven day cruises to Alaska. We may have we may have 100 or 200 kids on board, but quite often you'll have guests on board saying, I haven't seen any kids. Apparently you have them on board. I haven't seen any because we keep them all upstairs in our um, wonderful club how area. We've got this entire deck just for the younger cruisers. And, and as a parent myself, of the damn kids, um, I prefer to my kids to be one of you know a hundred or two hundred than one of one thousand on board. So it's just great for the entire family. I mentioned um, that we're for explorers. What I meant by that is we have a depth and breadth with the sheer amount of itineraries and variety of I our itineraries, the number of ports they go to, and the number of itineraries um, that is very rarely matched. Um, there aren't many cruise lines that will be in a particular region and offer so many itineraries in that region. Um, doesn't matter which sector of the cruise industry you're, you're looking at. It's, uh, it's, it's something we're very proud of. And because we've been around for a long time, it'll be 150 years next year, our anniversary, we've got an experience and a know-how in regions 
all around the world. And we've had tweaked itineraries, created relationships around the world with various destinations, uh, itineraries, countries, uh, sorry, um, authorities and countries to be able to do certain things that not all cruise lines are able to. So the immersion is, is key. The food, I mean, that's one of the main reasons everyone cruises, right? Um, we've always been a cruise line for foodies. Uh, I don't like that word. That's not that I don't like it. I'm not a huge fan of the word foodie because I think we're all foodies to varying degrees, but we've always been known for the culinary. And I think where we again fall into a category that um, we're kind of kind of there on our own in a, in a sweet spot to use kind of a, a, a kind of a food metaphor is you usually see in the cruise industry two polar opposites either very small ships with perhaps one dining room um, where it's that same dining room every day or perhaps one alternate or option casual option at the other end of the spectrum you've got mega ships where there's a dining room that's the same menu every day and if you don't want to eat in there there are 15 paid options um, with Holland America, it's neither of those things. We have the classic dining room experience where they're open seating or fixed seating, where their menus are fresh and rotate every day, different options every day. And then we have those three or four, depending on the ship, specialty dining venues for something a little bit different. So it's a wonderful mix. And um, also we don't, we don't hitch our wagon to one celebrity chef just for, you know, um, you know, a little bit of PR. We have a team, we have eight members of the culinary council, all of them Kind of inject their creativity and know-how and they they have their own ideas um each one is you know either a michelin star chef a, a proprietor author tv chef they're, they're just an incredible team and that's really where the the kind of the the uh the creativity and the fun comes from with our menu on board and then with the ports this is this is something that is kind of new but it's, it's worth um uh i wanted to make you aware of it especially if you haven't sailed with honda america for some time because this really came out of um, the, the river cruise industry, maybe about 10, 15 years ago when river cruises kind of peaked. Folks went, and tr went to try river cruises. Now they kind of come back to ocean because there's just so many more places you can cruise with ocean. And when they came back to us, many guests uh, expressed a sentiment along the lines of wanting to have more up close and personal experiences in port, be able to break bread with the locals, meet local, um uh families who are you know uh, uh, restaurant restaurateurs or you know learn how locally locally sourced ingredients are used in traditional recipes with locals and, and just get out there and have that that fit that that connection in terms of culinary and food which is so important and we do that everywhere it's not just a case of the culinary hotspots you might think well in europe or asia we even do that in alaska there are some awesome culinary tours in alaska in juno we do a walking tour a VIP culinary walking tour where you get to um, uh, uh, visit some of the top kitchens and, and hotel kitchens in Juneau, meet the chefs, sample the, those locally sourced ingredients and, and kind of get hands on. In Ketchikan, there's a great uh, culinary tour where you can go out and see how the uh, oyster larvae are cultivated, um, harvest them, sample them. Then with the kelp farm, see how those ingredients are used, how the kelp is used uh, to create certain products and produce uh, and get hands on again. So it's not just Europe when we think of culinary tours. The other big part of the experience on board, I have to mention this before we go any further, is music. Um, music is key on board. We shook things up in the industry a few years ago. We decided to move away from just having the same old kind of music venues where you have cruise ship musicians jump from lounge to lounge on different nights, changing their jackets, putting on a different badge, playing a different type of music. We went down a different path and it has been very, very successful. We've created purpose-built venues for professional musicians who are experts and um, uh, experts in their particular genre of music and veterans in their particular genre of music. And they perform actual music shows rather than just general kind of cruise ship lounge music. So, for example, we've got B.B. King's Blues Club, and these are an eight piece band. They've all passed through Beale Street, Memphis, B.B. King's Blues Club, and they get the crowd on their feet every night of the cruise when they're playing. They're playing everything from um, Chuck Berry to Bruno Mars, um, Beyonce to Aretha Franklin, you name it, whatever gets the crowd on their feet. And then you've got just a short walk away because it's called Music Walk. So everything is within a fairly close proximity, all on the same deck. Then you've got billboard on board. This is dueling pianos. We extended out the piano bar to create more space 
and it's two piano entertainers. So they're riffing off of one another, playing different styles, having laughs and jokes, lots of sing-alongs. I love this lounge because whenever I'm on board, on the first night of the cruise, I'll always go and check out Billboard on board because I love to watch folks just walk through that area of the ship where Billboard on board is and they'll stop and look and they'll start listening and then they'll lean and then they'll be there for the entire set. And then the next night they're there for every set they play and they're hooked for the entire cruise. It's a phenomena that I see every time. And then Lincoln Center. Now this is, this is classical recitals performed by uh, an ensemble who, who are from Lincoln Center, the, 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 the kind of number one institute for classically trained musicians in North America. And they are playing classical uh, recitals and fusions. So it might be Buck meets Beyonce. They'll do a New York set where it's Stan Getz and Billy Joel and Alicia Keys mixed in in a classical style. What I love about Lincoln Center is it's the perfect venue for when you've, you've come back on board ship from the day's activities. If you've been ashore, you uh, maybe relax, kind of get refreshed, then get changed for the evening. And I just love to grab a cocktail and just go and sit in Lincoln Center stage and let their performance just wash over you. It's almost meditative. So music on board is phenomenal. I'll touch on the other venue a little bit later. I want to get into some of this other stuff. Oh, and the service, we've been known for service for a long time, not just in the cruise industry. Our name gets checked in other sectors as an exemplary uh, level of service. Um, but I just want to send a big shout to, to our crew members in the culinary department, the housekeeping department, the beverage team, because they're winning hearts and minds for us every single cruise. And I know a lot of you out there who've cruised on America are smiling and nodding right now. It's our, it's our crew members. Um, so the damn fleet themselves, I'm not going to talk about every damn ship. I don't have time to. I just want to mention one ship because she's about to enter the fleet. She's on schedule to join later this year, the Rotterdam. She becomes our new flagship She'll in fact become the seventh ship to bear the name Rotterdam. Um, she's the third in the pinnacle class, a class of ship that has been welcomed by our mariners with open arms. The, ship, the ships are absolutely beautiful, still just under 100,000 tons. So not mega ships there. They're, they're only really 15,000 tons larger than our previous kind of class of ships. So uh, the Rotterdam is a gorgeous ship. Um, packed full of all the regular Honda America features you come to expect with a few extras. Here's a few kind of sneak peeks and a few shots around the ship. I'm not going to stop on any of these. We just don't have time. But look at that wonderful, open, fresh dining room space. Um, I'll, I'll take you around some of the staterooms here. There's a there's a couple of shots here. Look at that beautiful accommodations. If you want more information about the Rotterdam, you'd like more information about Rotterdam, reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultant because they are getting the updates as we closer to sailing. Um, they're getting all those updates about Rotterdam as we get close to that point and right now she's actually back in the yard she is built she we are we're 95 percent there with rotterdam she's on schedule she's in the the yard in the fincantieri shipyard in mestre just outside of venice she just completed her sea trials and she is ready to go uh in great shape so yeah she'll be coming along very soon so i would like to talk about all 500 itineraries but i know that just isn't possible. And you'll be here till next Tuesday or uh, sorry, next Thursday. But we're going to talk about Alaska mainly. Then we'll touch on a few other bits and pieces. Uh, Alaska is something we've been known for for a long time. That's why we say we are Alaska. Doesn't matter whether it's by land or by sea. You are with the experts. There's a reason why we win awards year after year. Um, we've been sailing there and operating there for a very long time when it comes to the land portion, even since before Alaska was a state. Um, so we have the experience. We have the deployments in Alaska, um, in Western Canada, um, for most uh, travel agents, for most cruisers, most folks in the industry. When they think of a cruise line that visits uh, Alaska um, from Vancouver, it's Holland America that comes to mind. The same for Seattle. We dedicate mo in most years, uh, not every year, but most of the, I would say, out of the last five, 10 years, most of those years, we've dedicated practically half of our fleet to sailing just out of Vancouver in one way or another. Most of those ships will go to Alaska and then there are other ships out of Seattle. So um, we're dedicated to the region and there, is, there, there are several different options. So these are some of those accolades, awards and accolades, which we're very proud of. Um, we are rated best in Alaska um, and Glacier Bay plays a big part in this and I'll touch on that in just a second. 
But these are some of the other reasons we're known. Um, we're, we're known as the, the, the go to Alaska um, cruise operator, as it were. Um, but the first thing I want to mention is the fact that we um, have more time in Glacier Bay and we visit Glacier Bay more often because we have more permits. Now, you may think, well, what, why should I care how many permits you have? Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but essentially the cruise operator that received the second um, highest amount of permits was half the amount we received. To put that in kind of a perspective, it's equivalent to if you were looking to visit a port on land and you had a choice of going with three different cruise lines to that region. One didn't, didn't visit that port at all. The other visited it for two hours, maybe 90 minutes, and the other one stayed all day. The one that stays all day is going to give you the most value. That's what happens with us in Glacier Bay because we have all those permits. We can stay for longer. So you don't just get one glacier viewing experience. You get multiple uh, uh, glacier viewing experiences, more opportunities to see wildlife. Because if your ship isn't sailing in Glacier Bay for that day of the cruise, they're not going anywhere else. They're just out in the Gulf of Alaska and you're paying for that day. You know, there's a certain amount of dollars per day, right? Is you're getting more value if you're spending that time in Glacier Bay. And it's all narrated by the park rangers, by our onboard naturalist. So you're getting so much enjoyment when you're, when you're in Glacier Bay. As I say, more glacier viewing opportunities. There's some big news when it comes to the, uh, the, the ship that's sailing Alaska itself, or one of the ships. And that's why this little fella here is giving the ship a round of applause, because our Konings Dam, one of the pinnacle class ships, is coming to Vancouver. Now, you remember that ship Rotterdam we just talked about, the brand new Pinnacle class ship? Well, this is her sister, her slightly older sister by a couple of years. She's one of our new Pinnacle class ships and she or any of the Pinnacle class ships have not yet sailed out of Vancouver. They've never been to the West Coast before. So this is very exciting. Not only do you get the opportunity to visit Alaska with the experts for all the reasons I've just mentioned, but you get to experience one of the Pinnacle class ships. So even if you're not ready to sail in Europe yet, because that's where the Rotterdam is, you can sail a Pinnacle class ship, her sister close to home out of Vancouver. And we're not just bringing a new ship in for a couple of dates, you know, as a, as a showcase. She's there every Saturday. She's small enough to get under the Lionsgate Bridge every Saturday. So lots of opportunities. Um, and besides Glacier Bay, there's some other reasons why you get so much value when it comes to the, the whole America itineraries themselves. In ports like Skag, uh, sorry, Juno, we in almost 99% of cases will have the premium berths, berths one and two in Juneau, where we're docked downtown. So you step off the ship and you're downtown, walk right off into the square in Juneau with everything right there. Um, the other cruise lines have to either dock in berths um, three and four, which is a 15, 20 minute walk or a taxi ride or out of the container port, which is a shuttle in. So you're getting more time because you're right there and so more value as well. So um, that's the Konings Dam and she does have those music venues plus that other lounge I didn't mention earlier. So in addition to those other three lounges, you've got Rolling Stone Rock Room. Now Rolling Stone Rock Room is classic uh, 60s, 70s, 80s rock. Think the Eagles, think uh, Led Zeppelin, think Fleetwood Mac. Um, kind of you get the picture, right? So classic pub rock and that's all happening um, while you've got options of BB King's Blues Club, Lincoln Center, it's just uh, BB and uh, Billboard on board, so much going on music wise. There's some other new venues, Holland American Mariners, take note, if you haven't been on a pinnacle class, we have a second coffee shop. This is the, um, this is the uh, Grand Dutch Cafe, where it, it's a kind of an, an authentic um, kind of Dutch experience because obviously we have that European heritage, that Dutch heritage, we can do this in an authentic way. We serve, uh, Dutch treats like crepes, um, pastries, coffee and tea served on Royal Delft earthenware, Dutch lagers, all in this wonderful kind of area that overlooks the atrium. So you kind of see the hubbub and this kind of exterior viewing portion and the dining room is just gorgeous. I think looking at a wonderful open kind of fresh space like this is very reassuring for, for us when and, and folks who are looking at returning to sail and they want kind of spacious areas. You don't want to kind of cramp small areas. That's why um, ships like the, the the Pinnacle class and the Holland America ships are so popular because of that space. So look out for the Konings Dam, summer 2022, sailing the round trip Saturday, seven day Alaska Inside Passage. 
But that's not all we do with Alaska. You've got those land and sea journey options. So I'm going to break this down for you. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you with all of the options because there are dozens of options in terms of um, the type of land and sea journey you take. I'll just break it down into some kind of basic categories and kind of propose some various ways of doing it. So first off, you've got the Denali land and sea journeys. Then you have the Yukon and Denali. So um, the land and sea journeys um, fall into those 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 two camps really. This is kind of the entire uh, region that we visit. I mean, we'll go as far north as Fairbanks, Dawson City. You've got um, land and sea journeys that will run up to um, 16, 17 days in some cases, or uh, as, as short as 10 days. And I'll show you those in just a second. A lot of it will center around um, uh, the uh, uh, Denali National Park and the McKinley Chalet Resort. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, so this is kind of an example of what we call a triple Denali. So these two, this, this chart underneath, that represents the same land and sea journey, um, first going southbound and the other one going northbound. They're the same. So this is kind of the first, the first um, thing you have to decide. Do you want to go cruise first or land first? There's no right way to do it. I find a lot of individuals uh, will opt for land first. I think there's something uh, reassuring about getting on the ship and relaxing. You've done the land portion, then just get on the ship and relax. But there's really no right way to do it. Um, you will see that this is a triple Denali, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a second, because you can do a one day in Denali, you can do a double Denali or three days in Denali. We recommend at least two or three days for, for a few reasons. Um, and, and I'll get to that in just a second. But you can see here the various aspects of the journey. The green line is our deluxe motor coach. Now that motor coach is wonderfully spacious. And then um, from Anchorage through to Denali, uh, you arrive on the McKinley Explorer. Now the McKinley Explorer is awesome. There it is um, going over Hurricane Gulch just outside, um, just outside Denali there. And uh, these, these rail cars are fantastic. The, this big open top, uh, sort of sorry, dome topped roof with with um, anti-glare non-reflective glass you get to get those pictures wonderful service very spacious and you get to just arrive into uh, um, the McKinley Chalet Resort and Denali National Park in style so that is one kind of piece of the puzzle and the Denali experience itself like I say is uh, centered around the McKinley Chalet Resort uh, area uh, or, or our McKinley Chalet Resort and um, the kind of hub of that is Denali Square. I'll, I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. But going back to the length of time you spend in Denali, whether it's one, two or three days, another great reason to spend two or three days aside from just having more time and, um, you know, optimizing your chances of great weather, because obviously weather can change. You want to you want to get that viewing of the great one of Denali itself. Um, so the more days you have, the more opportunities you have. But it's it, on every two and three night stay, if it's a double or a triple, you get the Tundra Wilderness Tour included now. Now, the Tundra Wilderness Tour is the highest rated tour. That's why we include it. It is the best chance of seeing the big five. Um, it's akin to, you know, an Alaskan safari. So that's included when you take, take a little bit more time there. This shows you the map of the Tundra Wilderness Tour. Um, compared to the kind of Denali Natural History Tour, which is offered by other cruise operators, which has kind of slightly more limited uh, viewing opportunities of the Big Five. That's why the Tundra Wilderness Tour is so highly rated. And just to touch on that McKinley Chalet Resort area, this is this is some, a, a place I love. I've, I've been there myself. And the first thing you'll notice on, oh, by the way, this is one of our Denali suites. You can opt to upgrade to one of these suites there. Beautiful, beautifully swish, but still in keeping with that kind of uh, classic kind of log cabin feel and Alaskan feel. But this is Denali Square in the McKinley Chalet Resort. And the reason I love it, I think it just is so different from other experiences you can have in other chalet resorts in the region for, that are um, uh, part of other cruise operators uh, operations is that ours is in keeping with that rugged Alaskan wilderness feel where others do seem a little bit kind of pretty and preen, like a landscape kind of campsite uh, uh, kind of aesthetic. 
so that's why ours ours just uh has has kind of received so many accolades and received such such uh kind of great reviews it's the it's the feeling of the cozy fireside pits the fireside entertainment the dinner theater carsten's public house so that will be your hub um when you're in denali that will be that will be a place you'll be visiting quite a lot when you're staying at the mckinley chalet resort so this is how it breaks down so all of those things i've mentioned this is what the denali land and sea includes um when it's when it's a denali now with it when it's a yukon you're going to add in some extra opportunities to uh to experience um the uh that gold that gold rush history and uh and kind of have that experience that is a rite of passage for many canadians to, to visit the yukon it is our highest rated experience this is how it looks compared to the land and sea when it's just a denali you can see pr the primary difference in terms of the cruise is the cruise portion is shorter you either embark or um you, or you either disembark or embark in skagway to connect with the land portion and you do that by hopping on board the white pass and yukon railroad which is phenomenal it is just such a splendid experience um whichever way you're taking north or southbound but the the essential difference is if you're visiting the yukon the cruise portion is going to be slightly um shorter but then you do have those other um uh, factors to uh, or options to the to, to kind of um play around with there are options where you can do a, a single double or triple denali for example whether or not you include a dawson or fairbanks there are several options out there so reach out to your expedia cruises consultant they can go through them with you and find the best value and the best kind of um package that works for you so i'm going to touch on a few areas now before i wrap up some of those, some of those longer cruises I want to quickly make mention of Europe because I did kind of tease it a little bit earlier with Rotterdam and I must mention it. I worked on board ships for many years and for me sailing on board with uh, Holland America in Europe was just uh, nothing that I'd seen with an, uh, any other cruise line. I think because Holland America has a DNA unlike any other cruise lines because our heart and soul goes, you know, 150 years deep in Europe. It's so we have so, so many uh, connections and relationships that are still alive and kicking to this day. So we can deliver that authentic European cruise experience, but we've been headquartered in North America for the last 40 years. So our product is designed for North American guests, our programming, our menus, you know, when it comes down to the announcements on board, you're, you're, we're catering for North American uh, clientele, but delivering that European, uh, kind of classic European feel. Um, it's also akin to, you know, because we know the area so well, if you were, in a situation where you were let's say visiting a family friend a family member a friend who moved to a city or a town or a country that you're unfamiliar with and you go and visit them and they show you around like a local that's what it's like cruising with holland america in europe so many um, um uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, opportunities to experience europe that you wouldn't necessarily get any other way so some ports that jump out of me i'm not going to run through all these ports i know we don't have time but every time i see this picture I see Bruges, it just makes me think of strolling those canals, the, just that architecture, the smell of, smell of the Belgian chocolate, the moulet frites, the, the Belgian Trappist beers, just the sights and sounds of Europe are incredible. And every time I see these pictures, these ports just start jumping out at me. I wanna be on a ship in Europe. We're bringing back classic ports that we haven't sailed for some time, uh, visited for some times. Sometimes there's some new new ports, some, um, some gems, some, some classics you can sell uh, combinations of various regions so you can do iceland and the fjords and the british isles on the rotterdam this is on our brand new ship rotterdam and by the way when we have a new ship in europe we don't just put it into the same itinerary over and over it goes on a rock star tour all over europe and you can combine these voyages speak with your expedia cruises consultant about this the fjords for example can combine with the baltic this is a longer beautiful longer fjords sailing all the way up to the north cape on the Rotterdam that just fits in perfectly there in the fjords. And then the Baltic, I think the Baltic is the, 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 the best place to start in Northern Europe. It's the logical next step in European cruising. There's just so much kind of a variety when it comes to art, history, culture, cuisine, culinary, uh, language, and it's fast paced, it's busy, but it's also relaxing. Just so many amazing places to see. And you can combine it to make a longer cruise. Like I say, these are longer sailings. We call them collector's voyages we've already made them in our system we've combined them 
and we've already given you a 10% price break or thereabouts, around about 10%. Just speak with your Expedia Cruises consultant. If you're thinking of going to Europe, let them know what kind of cruises you're looking at. They can pull you up some options where you can make it longer. You can combine two areas of Europe so you get more value, you get a price break, more opportunities to see different parts of Europe. Even with transatlantics, I have to mention this one. It's our, it's our big birthday next year, our 150th anniversary. We're recreating down to the very day, the cruise length on the same ship. Well, it's seventh incarnation, the Rotterdam number seven. We're recreating that very first Holland America voyage, Rotterdam via Plymouth to New York. It's gonna be a cruise where mariners are coming from far and wide to enjoy it. But this can also be combined with the cruise that came before the Baltic. So you can say do a Baltic cruise, cruise do then the transatlantic and get that price break. Um, this is true of all sorts of transatlantics. You can combine the Mediterranean, so many great things. So, so do reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultant on that. Um, these two, actually, I should not have included this one on the left-hand side because I'm pretty sure it's fully booked now or it's very close to. It's our classic Hold America sailing, the, uh, the voyage of the Vikings, round trip Boston. It's, you know, no need for long haul air. Uh, Northern Europe and, uh, with Greenland, Iceland and, and back to Boston, a Hold America classic. Hopefully we'll have that open for 2023 soon, but you can do this 18 day version across into Boston as well, a different ship. I'm just gonna dive down into the Mediterranean super quickly. Sorry to show you all that. If you haven't eaten dinner, I'm sorry to show you this picture. I'm sure those Mediterranean delights will make your tummy start rumbling. I, I need to mention the Mediterranean because we've got some classic ports, but we're bringing back Istanbul, one of my favorite ports in the world. It's a city so nice, they had to name it twice. Uh, just packed full of culture, sights, sounds, whether you're visiting the Top Kapi Palace, the Kun Kapi District, Harsh Sophia, Blue Mosque, whatever it is, just by day and by night, the city changes perspective. And we're there overnight um, on every stay. We stay through to the next day. And it features on one of our Eastern Western Mediterranean classics, the Barcelona through Venice with an overnight stay or the Venice round trip up to Istanbul. So you've got the glamorous East, uh, Western Mediterranean, the French and Italian Rivieras, then you've got the Greek islands. You can make it 24 days. Those two go together, 24 days is a collector's voyage. So these are the types of longer cruises in Europe. I highly recommend for great value. This one is so popular right now for 2022. And just a few more, a couple more, longer, but out of the West Coast. If you're thinking, well, I want to stay closer to home. We have just opened up our Hawaii cruises for um, spring or, or fall of 22 and April 23 out of Vancouver, round trip on that gorgeous Koningsdam, Koningsdam ship I uh, talked to you about. So some really cool options. Speak with your Expedia Cruises uh, consultant and then some longer South Pacific, epic South Pacific journeys. One round trip San Diego, one has an embarkation in Vancouver as well. Awesome opportunities to have kind of a bucket list experience close to home. And then the Panama Canal is back. We haven't had Panama, as many Panama canals in the last few years. We've just opened them up for booking um, for spring 22 through to spring 23. We only do them in, the, in April, October, and then April for a ship that sails out of Vancouver or into Vancouver from Fort Lauderdale. So if you want to hop on and on board in October and extend your summer out, it's a great way to do it. Or just pack up and hop on board in April and start the summer early. This, this is a great way to do it. Uh, and then I must mention this. Sorry, one, one more. This is it. I promise. There's a third ship to that pinnacle class. Rotterdam, the brand new ship. Koningsdam, her sister. The other sister, New Staten Dam, is coming to the East Coast. If you fancy flying out to the East Coast to Quebec or Boston, Look at these awesome itineraries that have Newfoundland. There's even one, I think this is close to fully booked as well. Uh, don't quote me on that. The Expedia Cruises consultants can find out for sure. This one on the right hand side, Boston round trip up to Iceland and Greenland, just phenomenal. And finally, I have to mention this one. It's the, it's the granddaddy of them, of them all, the Grand World Voyage for 2023. And it's a myth, it's a complete lie, a complete myth. I have to say it's a complete myth that you gain a pound for every day that you're on board. Uh, because you would you would be in trouble. Uh, but this cruise, it's the one everyone kind of graduates to. Uh, you may be looking at it thinking one day, make sure you, you speak with the Expedia Cruises uh, team about this because they can let you know how sometimes you can take segments of these. They can give you, uh, get organized placeholder bookings. If you're thinking about holding a place, let's say maybe it's not 23 you're thinking of, maybe think of 24 for the Grand World Voyage. They can make placeholder bookings and there's lots of things they can they help you with with these. Uh, a couple of other things just before we wrap up. 
we've got if you are looking to cruise sooner before the end of this, uh, this year before the end of 2021 i know a lot of what we've been talking about pretty much everything and most of you are focused further out to 2022 and 2023 we've got all those opportunities on the back burner if you are looking for something closer you do have an assurance called our book with confidence right now that you can cancel up to 30 days prior and you'll get a future cruise credit and then there's a great promotion that we've just started a new pricing option so speak with your experience cruises consultant about this um there there is now an option for you to just take a regular kind of bare bones cruise fare with no extras for a lower rate or you can have it all as this is called and essentially add our four most popular amenities that most frequently get purchased on board of a short excursion credit depending on the length of the cruise you're on you'll get various amounts of short excursion credits to use a drink package the signature beverage package which covers most um, drinks on board specialty dining depending on how long you're on board it will be one two or three extra specialty dining um, opportunities and then wi-fi we give you the uh, most popular package which is the surf package to have throughout the, the the cruise and you can essentially upgrade to this have it all package um and and get that those that extra value we basically um add uh, um, uh an extra um uh amount to have to have it all but that is a 50 percent discount um from what you'd have to pay if you then stepped on board ship and purchased those things separately on board so you're getting them at 50 percent discount and then just finally, um, uh, the team at Expedia Cruises or the teams Expedia Cruises at Edmonton and myself have put together an extra layer for you to get um, some other benefits on top of have it all if you choose that promotion or the 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 the, 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 promo the uh, fare without have it all. You can still get some extra shipboard credit. It really depends on the length of cruise you book and the type of stateroom you're in, but it'll be up to $100 shipboard credit for the room. If you are ready to book and you're in that mindset where you'd like to um, get something on the books and you choose to do so in the next eight days, um, you'll get some extra shipboard credit. Speak with the team um, and your Expedia Cruises consultant about that and they'll um, let you know how much shipboard credit your sailing will qualify for. Um, aside from the great deals from Ex uh, the Expedia Cruises has and the, the team has, which is uh, a lot, they have a lot of great deals because, and by the way, you'll get a better deal booking with Expedia Cruises than you would booking with Holland, Holland America directly any day of the week. You're always going get to get a better deal with Expedia Cruises because they work in volume. Because they're connected to that Expedia Cruises network, they have access to a volume that you do not. So we pass on. Um, savings that they pass on to you and extra amenities that they pass on to you uh, in many cases. So uh, you're always best booking with Expedia Cruises for that reason. And because they have expertise, they are up to date on every cruise line and every cruise operator's uh, latest deals, offers, itineraries, updates, and all of that kind of return to sale protocols, they're in the know. So it's their expertise, the fact they got the deals, and probably the most important thing, the part that is priceless is they are there for you in a pinch. They're a phone call or an email away. They're in your community, a real person in your community. You know, you can get hold of, chat to, email. And that is so vital. As you've seen in this last year or so, you know, even at the best of times, you can be traveling, a flight gets delayed, an itinerary changes. They're a phone call or an email away and they are there to help you. They're your advocate. They are there to make your vacation perfect. So that's why. Um, uh, it's a great idea to be working with them. So that's it from me. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it back over to Lisa. Let me see if I can stop sharing here. Here we go. Thank you so much, Tom, for a fabulous presentation. And also thank you for your wonderful words about our company in terms of our, our mission, in terms of what we do for our clients. We are there for them. We do have the knowledge. We do have some Expedia wonderful pricing for them so as well. I really liked what you talked about of the have it all. And the only thing I could think about is I've been without a vacation for almost two years. I absolutely want to have it all anytime <laughs> I go <laughs> away. Uh, so just a couple questions for you. You know, Tom, I think a lot of times from the West, people say, well, I've seen mountains, I've seen snow, why would I go to Alaska? And I think what they forget is the wildlife. So can you expand a little bit on the Alaska Big Five? Yeah, so that's the uh, dull sheep, uh, caribou, uh, grizzly, moose. Hold on, how many have I mentioned? Dull sheep, 
caribou, grizzly, moose. I'm missing one other. Anyone, anyone, I'll give you a, a bonus point if you can tell me what the fifth one is. <laughs> but yeah, you get that wildlife. The, it's, it's not just the, the wildlife in that respect. I mean, just the majesty of, of um, Denali itself. Just when, you, when you're coming in close on the McKinley Explorer, you just see it looming on the horizon. You realize how large it is. And just the, 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 that, that perspective, it just blows you away. Um, yeah, the, the culture, the wildlife, um, I live in Vancouver. I'm coming to you live from my basement office in North Vancouver. You know, we have mountains. They're just like, you know, the, the gorgeous Rockies. Um, but it is different. It, the, it's a different look, feel, flora, fauna um, is very different. You're going that much further north. You know, if you are looking at latitude, you're going that much further north. D different weather conditions. There's so much to learn from an ecological standpoint, historical standpoint. So there. There is so much there, and it's and it's it's so close when you when we think about it. Um, and I know there's many folks out there who've done a lot of other cruises, but haven't yet done land and sea. So it's on their list to to kind of scratch off. Yeah, absolutely, Alaska is absolutely you know spectacular and beautiful. A couple of comments: eagle and orca. I'm not sure if one if no, it's not one both, of those but yes, are both. that is a possibility. <laughs> You will definitely see those as well. Yeah, I'm going right. to ask the presentation. I'm going to thank myself. All right. Uh, a couple of questions that came up. Uh, number of average passengers on your Alaska ships? Um, so our average is 2,000. So the smaller ships in our fleet, uh, Volendam and Zandam, they're 1,400. The largest ships, Koningsdam, Rotterdam, 2,600. The rest of the fleet, there are... Um, six ships uh, that all have approximately 2,000 guests. So those sail to Alaska, the Koningsdam sails to Alaska. So around about, yeah, two, between, around about 2,000 on the high end, about uh, 2,600. But our yeah, guests- Kind of that, uh, that guests, mid, mid, mid mid, mid-size range. Yeah, there. like I say, a lot of the, uh, the other mid-size cruise lines are getting up there 3,600 guests and more. So um, yeah, still on the low to mid-side in the, in the premium okay. cruise uh, segment. All right. There's a question about any cruising going to the Middle East and another one about it Rome to Dubai through the Middle East. Uh, are there any itineraries that Holland America has for that? Um, yeah, Rome to Dubai. Uh, we don't have a Dubai one currently. We do have a couple of sailings in the Middle East. We, we have uh, a sailing that visits um, the Holy Land on the Volendam. Uh, or oh, actually, on the, that's on the, uh, the, the, uh, the Westerdam. So Haifa and Ashdod, um, and that is uh, as one of these. You remember the ship that combined that had Istanbul, and you can combine it to make twenty-four days. That has a sailing that actually will visit the Holy Lands, and it's the first time we've ever visited the Holy Lands on a um, on a on a ship of uh, that's a part of our Vista class. One of our ships that have so many verandas. There's eighty percent balconies on those ships, and we haven't ever, ever visited. The Holy Lands and the ship that had that many balconies. So that really means better value for verandas um, when you're in that part of the world. And our Volendam, um, one of our smaller ships, she's doing something called Voyages of Distinction. She's not repeating the same cruise twice. Each cruise is 14 days long, all around Europe, Northern Europe, Mediterranean, going into different types of ports, lesser known ports. She's going back to Egypt for the first time. Uh, most cruise lines haven't been um, docking in Egypt, going to Egypt for about eight, nine years. And so we're really excited to be back in Egypt, um, in Alexandra for the Cairo tours, the Pyramids of Giza tours. So yeah, two ships in the region, but no Rome to Dubai at this point in time. Quite often, Rome to Dubai would feature or Dubai would feature on one of our grand voyages. So that's, a, that's something to look out for. All right. Um, and Randy, obviously, uh, Mr. Google has come back with the big five, grizzly Go bears, moose, caribou, doll sheep, and gray wolves. Gray wolf. It's the gray wolf. There you go. I should have known. Okay, what's that? All I got right, 80% perfect. score on my test, on my, uh, my Alaska test. I think that's a pass. Thank you. Thank you for that, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Uh, question about this. I think it's specialty dining. Uh, are they included or is there additional costs? There are additional costs. So the dining room itself, fixed or open seating, no cost. Um, there are, um, an, uh, depending on the ship, 
uh, three, four uh, dining opportunities. You've got the Canaletto restaurant, uh, you, which is a kind of Ita Italian sharing Spartire restaurant, a Pinnacle Grill, our classic Pinnacle Grill, Rue de Sel de Mer, um, the Tamarind, Asian Fusion. Each one has a different uh, uh, charge, a different fee. Um, they range from kind of in the region of kind of 20 to $35. So actually a little bit less than that. Some of them are open for lunch as well. So there is a, there is a fee. Um, they are smaller in size. They're not large restaurants. Um, so they're, you know, capacity control. That's why we have that alternate dining fee for those. Um, but on the have it all, you do have those three, up to three dining inclusions, depending on the length of the cruise. So if you're on a seven day cruise, you'll get one dining. Let's say you're on a 14 day cruise, you'll get two dinings, a longer cruise, you'll get three. So you may be in a situation where you don't even need to purchase them yourselves. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, there's a question, can you do Vancouver, Yukon, Denali, Anchorage, back to Vancouver? Uh, my, my brain just exploded there. Hold on. <laughs> Vancouver, back to, so Vancouver. round trip Vancouver is really what you mean there. All, I, I think I think that's the question that's being asked, yes. No, there, um, the, you would be flying back from Anchorage one way. So you will fly back from Anchorage. So the, the land and sea journeys will always begin or end in Vancouver, but you will never get round trip. But really, when you look at a map, what you see on a cruise of Alaska is just a small part. You really do need to do the land portion to do it justice. Uh, question for you, has the Zandam re been, sorry, been refurbished? Uh, she has many times. I, I don't know when that person had sailed um, most recently. Uh, Volendam has been through Zandam, uh, I believe was scheduled to go through one of our updates and dry docks in this past year. Obviously, with the pause in operations, a lot of our dry docks and refurbishments have had to be rescheduled and moved around. Um, but I would have to double check my um, my kind of scheduling for the for our dry docks, because uh, if she didn't in the last um, uh, just before our pause in operations, she should be going in shortly after. Um, all of our ships are coming coming in and out of dry dock um, at least every two years or so. Okay. Uh, another question about the, okay, uh, why can't you do a 14-day Vancouver anchorage? You could do northbound and then southbound. So if you wanted a round trip yeah. Vancouver. Uh, well, I would you say, yeah. you know, watch this space and that you can certainly book um, two cruises to to a north because one type of alaska cruise we didn't cover tonight mm -hmm. is a seven day vancouver to whittier whittier being the port for anchorage mm -hmm. so you could do seven day north and then book it a seven day uh south you book those two separate cruises um your expedia cruise consultant can put the linkage on the on the file so we know you're on board for both legs so you can certainly cruise up and cruise back in 14 days but we don't have anything at for this season coming uh, in 2022, that is truly round trip 14 days built as one. But you can put it together for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, uh, just wait another couple of seconds to see if there's any more questions that came in. I think not right at this time. So thank you, Tom. Great presentation. If to, for everybody that's joined us today, you know, although travel is currently paused, the world will start to travel again. And it really is time to start thinking about what you want to do. And it's interesting what Tom said a couple of times when you said, um, oh, I better not have talked. To, I shouldn't talk about that one because it's sold out or it's sold out. And, you know, as a as a cruise consultant, we are looking and we are seeing limited availability. And I don't want to sound pushy, but truly people have missed out on vacations for two years. And so the demand for 2022 is high and the demand for 2023. You also mentioned the very flexible booking policy. So um, the fact that you can take the cruise with confidence and cancel up to 30 days in advance, but also remember if you book into 2022, final payments aren't due until 90 days prior and those, those final payment or those deposits are fully refundable up until that. Uh, oh, we did get a couple 
questions or another question about any what beer or wine theme cruises well for me every uh, cruise is a beer or wine <laughs> theme cruise <laughs> um no but we do have um uh, our uh, our partnership with the um uh, alaskan brewing company so we have some you know uh, alaskan craft beer um on board on draft on tap um but we don't have, and we'll always, and also same with wines, wherever we're sailing, you know, we'll have um, local local wines, regional wines and beers in many cases, but no themed cruises. But if you're sailing with me, we'll make it work. Well, it all sounds wonderful. I'm adding a few things onto my list that's getting longer and longer each day we're delayed in terms of what I wanna get back to. So thank you all for joining us. We appreciate your time tonight. We appreciate your past travels with us. We look forward to planning your future travels. Please reach out to your consultant if you have any questions and let us help start planning your next dream vacation. A uh, reminder to follow us on Facebook. You can check out our YouTube channel where this and all our other video presentations will be recorded. Next week, if you're free, we are having Celebrity Cruises, 7 p.m. Thursday night, featuring 2022 and 2023 voyages. So thank you again for your time, for your business. We appreciate you and we look forward to hearing from you and planning your next future vacation. Good night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.